Hey everybody, this is Doug with Artfully Rogue. So in this video, I'm going to show you five, say, tips or tricks that I use in my shop almost every single day. I kind of take them for granted because I use them every day. I had someone over visiting and they were watching me coil up my extension cord and they thought it was kind of interesting and I thought, well, maybe somebody else might find it interesting. Okay, so if you own a shop, a shed, a garage, or you happen to be in a business where you use extension cords, all right, this is how I wrap my extension cord. The majority of the people will either wrap their extension cord around something or they wrap it around their arm and they end up with something that looks like this. It starts off looking nice, but then as you travel around with it or as you move it and you start to take it out, you all know what happens. It gets to be a tangled mess. Okay, so here's the secret. You're gonna take both ends of your extension cord and you're gonna hold them together in one hand. Now, move along your extension cord, keeping them side by side. Now, if they both turn in your hand, it's okay. As long as you keep them side by side, sorting out any tangles that you get until you get to the middle of the cord. All right. Now this is where most people make a mistake. All you're gonna do is twist and make a loop. See how that does? All right, very much like a slip knot. You're gonna reach through the hole and you're gonna grab the long side and you're gonna pull with the short side, okay? See what we're doing here? Now, let go with the short side. And this is where I switch hands. I have the remaining part of my cord here. I put my hand through here and I just start pulling. Each time you go through the loop, you feed yourself a little bit more cord and you keep doing that until you have now created a series of slip knots. Now this is a 50 foot cord, and when you get to the end, to lock it off, simply pull it through. Now, this is my cord. It looks like a mess. However, it's completely organized. And here's what's really nice about it. Like I said, this is a 50 foot cord. If I'm maybe 20 feet away from an outlet, all I have to do is pull out enough of the cord that I want to use and the rest of it stays organized. I can put it back together again, go back to doing the same thing where I put my hand in the loop and I start grabbing through and I can easily reorganize my cord again. and you're ready for your next job. Okay, let's show you the next tip. All right, so where I work in the summertime, it gets super, super hot, and I mean like super hot. So I wear shorts in my shop a lot. Most of the time I wear closed toed hiking boots, just because they're comfortable when I'm standing on the concrete all day. So if you have a shop or you work with metal, you know work with wood, uh, you might be know where I'm heading with this you tend to get particles or things inside your shoes because they fall in. Because I'm also an avid hiker, I've kind of combined a tool that I use in hiking in my daily uh, life here in the shop. So to avoid getting pieces of metal or wood down in my shoe, I use a product called Gators. Now I'm not being sponsored by REI, um, uh, but that's what these are. These are a brand from REI. They're very short. You can get longer ones. They typically use them in hiking when they're going through snow to keep snow from getting into the boot. Basically, you slide the gator on, you put your shoe on, and then you tie up your shoe. These could also be used for uh, your tennis shoes or your work boots or, you know, whatever you're actually using. And because uh, in this shop, you definitely, definitely want to make sure you have some good shoes if you're standing on concrete all day. Now you just pull these around. I kind of tuck my shoelaces in. It's just one less thing to kind of get caught up when I'm walking around. This goes directly under the shoe. 
you tuck the sock in. This has a little pull tab, a uh, little metal tab that you can actually hook onto the laces here. Pull that so it's nice and tight. And now you're not gonna get things inside your boots. Okay, so the next three tips that I'm gonna show you are all knots. But each knot is different and each knot has a different purpose. And if you are a metal worker or a woodworker or a handyman or a Mr. Fix-It or a you know handy woman or a Mrs. Fix-It or you know, if you get out there and put things on your vehicle or in your truck, um, you need to know how to properly tie them down. Now obviously you can use ratchet straps. Not everybody has these. Um, or what I find most of the time is when I go to the big box stores is I'm helping someone else tie some of their stuff down to make sure that it doesn't come off their vehicle. So the first knot that I'm going to talk about is the clove hitch. Now this is mainly used around pipe. So if you were holding pipe or trying to haul pipe up into the air, maybe you're doing a job where you got to lift some scaffolding or whatnot, and you don't really have a, uh, a point to tie off to, this is how you tie off to pipe. This is what's referred to as the dead end, and this is the live end. Take your rope so it rests across the top. Pull it around and go through that. Okay. This is a clove hitch. Now to finish off the clove hitch, because you want to make sure that this is not going to go anywhere, because if you just if you just did this, it'll hold. However, you want to back up. So you want to give yourself enough of a tail on your dead end. Alright, as you spin around, you can open this up. And then you're just going to finish it off with a little half hitch knot. Okay? Alright, that's the clove hitch. Okay, so now that you have the cove hitch over here, you want to be able to tie off your material so you bring your rope around the other support on your lumber rack, but now you want to be able to tighten this sucker down. Now, you can easily pull and that will make it tight, all right? But I'm going to show you something here. We're going to make a figure eight. That is your second knot that you want to learn. Your figure eight is a type of knot. I'm going to bring it up here a little bit closer. You put a loop in your rope, all right? Wrap it around once, and then come up the other side. And as you can see, that creates a figure eight. This is what they use to repel uh, down rocks. So your clove hitch is on the other side. You want your figure eight out here somewhere in the middle. So pull back some rope, all right? Tie that figure eight. Okay, make sure you pull tight. Now, take that loose end of rope and put it through the loop in the figure eight. This is now what becomes a trucker's hitch. All right, so now you can wrench against the rope. All right, and now you can make it super tight. And all you have to do is pinch right there. All right. Flip your rope over, pull it through, put another half inch knot in there, and you're good. All right, now you're nice and tight. So clove hitch, figure eight, and then throw a half inch in to lock it off. Okay, again, this is used to tie off uh, material. We used to use it to haul up heavy motors, so it's a nice strong knot, but again, under pressure, it's easily to undo. So. Whatever piece of material you're going to be using or tying off to. Uh, I'm right-handed, so I, I keep the dead end over in my right hand. I keep the live end over in my left hand. So what I do is I take the rope and I do a quick little loop. All right, so it's going around the piece, it goes up and then under. All right, now you're taking your dead end of your rope. You're going through the hole, around, and then back through the hole. Okay, and then you just pull. Now again, you don't need to finish off this knot with a half inch. This is fine just the way it is. And no matter how tight you pull it, all right, that's not going anywhere. Okay, it has the freedom to move around, unlike the clove hitch, which once it's in, in, in position and it's locked off, it's kind of less easy to move around. But here's what's nice about this one. All you have to do, pull that up, 
pull that out and you're loose again. All right, one of the ways that people remember, this is a rabbit, all right? Rabbit comes out of the hole, goes around the tree, goes back in the hole, and then that's it. That's the bowline. All right, again, the bowline is great for tying off things that you just need to either lift or you need to tie off, and then you can use a trucker hitch on this as well. But I do hope that some of these tricks might help you in your shop and in your daily business. If you have any questions or you'd like to add something to that, go ahead and drop those down in the comments. If you hadn't subscribed already, I would love it if you did. And hey, my next videos, I'm hoping to be getting out some uh, actual builds because uh, I got a list of things to do. So thanks for taking the time to watch and we'll see you in the next video.